um, know which kind of words I'm hearing yet. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. And we're back, so we're all live, so we're all good. Okay. Okay. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. The November meeting of the Board of Water Commissioners is called to order. Okay, first on the agenda. Reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Make a motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Presentation of bills and accounts. I move we accept the bills and accounts as presented. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. COVID-19. Um, we're gonna have our staff meeting tomorrow just to figure out what we're gonna do um, because it appears as if the county's infection rate is going back up and what measures are we gonna bring to bear to uh, keep everybody healthy? I didn't say healthy and happy, I said healthy. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job of stocking up on PPE. Uh, I think that um, it's a question of deciding schedules, um, you know, some of the other things that we have to deal with. We were pretty successful last time, and so. Um, I mean, every goal, I mean, you implemented a number of things back in the spring. We did, we did. and we're, we're, the meeting tomorrow, I think we'd like to discuss what worked, what didn't work, okay. you know. Um, we did a, every other day downstairs. I know other utilities did it one week on, one week off. Other people, we have another truck now. Um, you know, when are we going to start mandating masks in the vehicles again? Because we didn't, we kind of slacked off for a little bit. Okay, so like point that. I mean, it kind of lapsed out of a lot of the more right. of things as things got better. Well, and everybody, everybody, the infection rate here was less than one. And now today it's three. You know, it's up again. So okay. you know, we need to start being more careful because you can't fix a water main break from your couch on black with a laptop. You gotta commit. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna deal with that. But I think you know we'll we we'll, we deal with it before, we'll deal with it again. Okay. Cooper Lake. I have news. Good news, actually. Um, we found one. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 we found money. <laughs> yeah, it was under my desk. Yeah. Um, we had a call, a call with the DEC a couple weeks ago, and um, they are poised to issue our permit. They have no objections, and they had no they had a couple questions on wetlands and some other issues, and um, but no substantive issues. Um, because Cooper Lake is a, what they consider to be a major project, and I would agree, concur with that conclusion, they have to do public notification, I believe it's for 10 days in, or two weeks in the environmental uh, notice bulletin, mm -hmm. which is, it's been in there. Um, and we have to put it in the local paper, which Matt did, it was published on Thursday. So that starts the two week clock. And so that's a public comment period. Obviously, the DEC has to consider any comments that they get. Uh, I'm not aware that they have any. And because we're just, you know, super nice people, but we've been pretty transparent with our friends in Woodstock, I volunteered to also put it in their paper of record. And they don't have a newspaper of record. They, they used to be the Woodstock Times that ceased to print, but they have a, a digital version called Hudson Valley One. So that, that's going to appear today, I think it may be. Today. today, they're a weekly publication. So Matt made the arrangements last week. We missed their cutoff. We made their cutoff is Monday. I think he probably called them on Tuesday. Um, and so it was in today. So we, we've done that. So we're just waiting. Once once that comment period closes. Our assuming, comment period is a two week. I believe it's two weeks. Yes. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we'll issue the permits which means we're good to go to bid. You know, we're good to, the bid documents are, are 
complete yet, but when they will, so we're on schedule to go to bid December, January, uh, let the bids, um, review bids, and start construction April 1st. Now, are there two separate permits? One for the Ashokan and one for Cooper Lake? I'm yes, there are. There, there, there's one seeker, but the DEC asked to split them into two for the ease of their review. Okay. They believe the Ashokan piece is a minor project, and so they're prepared to issue those immediately. Okay. So I, I, and I assume Tracy uh, O'Malley at the DEC will get them both the same day. Okay, that's what I thought you said. Right. They're, they're, I mean, as, as far as Seeker is concerned, it's one project, but mm -hmm. for the ease of the DEC's review and to kind of conform to their methods and how they have to look at things, they asked us to do two separate applications, two, two permit applications, which we, you know, we did, no problem. And obviously DEPs are all signed off. They're, they're fine, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay. And so we are making progress on that front. And where are we standing then with the, the plans? We're at 90% design documents. And the reason you leave them at 90% is then any comments that would come in from the DEC would be included and you update it. They don't have any comments. Now we've also, because we are going to submit them the water part of it, the $7 million, that's the water infrastructure piece, we're going to try to get a D, at a minimum DWSRF loan. That means that DE, DOH and Ulster County has to review them. And they've already gotten the documents. I know DOH is swamped right now. I mean, um, they have all the regular permit and, and, and app, uh, design documents to review from everybody. And now with the new MCLs that just kicked in, they have all the additional ones from all the Long Island suppliers that are having to put in new treatment and all the upstate suppliers. And I don't think they have any more people. So um, I don't know what the time horizon is on that, but Brock Rogers has been wonderful to us. I mean, he'll call up, he'll ask questions. He's, he's been pretty efficient with us. And Tim at Ulster County, the, we, there's a new, we have a new um, regulator at Ulster County, and that's Tim Rose. And, yeah, I heard that. and Tim said to say hello. Um, he, he, I will, he was last in Ulster County. He was our regulator in 2004. Um, and then I think you hired him to go to Monticello. Yeah, he came down here just yeah. after I left Monticello. Right. And uh, so um, we did our annual inspection with them a week or so ago. Um, he, he said, my gosh, you changed a lot of things. <laughs> Which was a compliment. Yeah. You've done a lot of work and, and since I was last year. And so he's reviewing the plans and you know he's, he's been pretty good about getting stuff back even before. He was, he was a, a real nice guy to deal with. So the permits are separate from the plan review, though. Yes. DEC issues the permits, and if and the only reason DOH gets to look at them is because we're asking them to give us money. Anything that comes out of the ESC, whether it's a loan or a grant, has to go through DOH approval. Even if it's something they wouldn't normally approve, like a putting in a new eight inch main and you had an old eight inch main that doesn't normally re require DOH review because it's a replacement in kind, but if they're paying for it, mm -hmm. they, they need to look at it. Okay. Nothing other than that, right? That's, that. that's it, but that's the most progress we've had in a couple of months. Okay. That's good. Uh, transmission main rehab. We're almost done. We're at substantial completion. Uh, over the weekend, they knocked a bunch of little things off the punch list, so we're getting closer. Um, we have a no cost change order. And what that is, is um, the, the engineering tasks were broken down, were subdivided quite, quite honestly, too finely subdivided. And when you want to get reimbursed from EFC, you have to they have to indicate that, you know, even if you have extra money left in design, and this is a bidding service issue, 
well, you better have to transfer the money out of one account and put it in the other. So moving forward, we've agreed not to have such fine demarcations. We like engineering. But for now, we need to have a, a transfer from one task budget to another so that we can get reimbursed. And so um, the current budget that was a total of $535,280 that was left in the budget. And as a result of this, it's going to remain the same total, 235.28. But the money within the categories has been moved around. And so you need a motion? Yes, we do. Okay. So I need a motion to accept the change order. Is there a number on that? Uh, amendment, it's uh, amendment number one to the Kingston Water Department Water System Improvement Project from Camp Dresser and McGee. This only relates to the Camp Dresser and McGee work. So do I have a motion to? Make, I'll make that motion. Okay, Bob, do you have a second? I'll second it. Thanks for showing you. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Now, in terms of Schultz, and I'm not asking any, anyone to do anything tonight, um, at the end of a project like this, this is kind of a complicated project, and there were certain items in the bid that were um, we unit pricing, so, so much for cubic yard of rock, so much for foot of pipe removed. There's certain things that we asked them to do that were in addition and certain things that we told them they didn't have to do. So at the end of the day, you add up all the money that they owe us and all the money that we owe them. And it looks as if at next month's meeting, we'll have about a $4,400 $4, change order in their favor. And that'll be the end of the project. Yeah, so so. We'll, do, we'll address that. Next month, in December's meeting. You'll have actually. We'll. I have a detailed list right now of, of you know what's in our favor, what's in their favor, and I'll send it out with the board. The next board meeting is only three weeks away, so um, it would give us time to make sure there are no further hiccups in this process. Okay. Um, last item is I sent out the. the yeah, I think I sent out the Brigadier Larios was it? yes the board pattern. Mm -hmm. Um. This is something that we would pay out of existing funds out of our operations. It is tied to the bidding water project in that um, we all felt because of the, the real, we made significant changes to the piping down there. We want really detailed as built and all along the contractor GPS everything. So um, Bernier and Larios, um, and this is a pretty good price actually. They're going to do a f some field surveying, not much, and most of this is just giving us the digital digitized drawings to reflect the asphalts. And so we'll have you know GIS locations on everything moving forward. And also, um, well, which is important because there's a lot of crisscrossing the pipes there. We'll um, we'll actually have profiles, which is something that we sorely lack in a lot of projects. So I would ask you to approve that. And that money wouldn't come out of the bond proceeds, um, but rather out of, we have, we have money in our operating budget to pay for that. I'll make that motion. Um, let me just get the paper that has the... Can I have a motion? So I have a second? Second. Okay. So it's a motion and second to contract with um, Bernier and Larios to do survey work at Bitty Water? Yes, and, and, and at Jockey Hill as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, those in favor? All right. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Yes. And that's another transmission rating project. It's one project I'm glad that it's almost done. Now, are you breaking out the second phase? Which yes. Another, uh, we're going to do that under is that under WIA or is that no? A, that's a second. That's under that transmission main project. It's just a third phase. Um, and we're actually we had a meeting here the other day, and we're well on our way to kind of figure it out. The two leaks we have to fix, um, 
And I want to talk to Bill about how best to approach that um, in terms of bidding. And a couple specific questions that, that I want to go over with you. No rush though. So um, that'll be coming up. Now, would we have to, would there be plans that would have to go to DOH for that? Probably. Okay. But I think so, there are nothing, I mean, we, that's one of the things we talk about. The engineering on this, fix in a week, the plans are very simple. Right. It, it's a quick turnaround. Um, you know, it, it's just some, it's really very, very, very simple to do that. You know, probably, we're looking to do that in the springtime, I'm assuming? Probably this early spring. You know, it depends on the kind of winter we have. You don't want to you don't want to dig that stuff up when the ground's frozen, right. but it's easier to get in there right now with, with all the vegetation that's been killed you know, after that first frost. So we'll see. We'll see how fast we can do this. Okay. Well, welcome the mayor into our meeting. Hey there. Um we are 2020. Uh, we're moving along on that. Uh, we we again at that same we had kind of a, a, a mega meeting here with with CDM and all of, all of our players. Um, they have uh, sent me their EFC MWBE um, utilization plans, which is the first step in getting that money freed up, and they can start building for the stuff. And we have a pretty good handle on what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. Ryan's out. Uh, doing some survey work on some of the valve replacements, and so we're going to have we're going to be able to move forward on that work pretty quickly. So we got a plan; we're moving with it. Okay, more to come then, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the scope is pretty well defined. Um, you know, on the the big thing for Ryan and I are the valve replacements in town, so we can control the flow of water when we have a break. Is that received. money has been received for that? Well, it's been, it, it's, it, we don't get it until we spend it. Kind of it's been appropriated from, from yes. um, we close on everything. It's all, you know, it's, everything is there. Um, and so he's out surveying and kind of, they, want, they wanted us to tell them how many valves we want to replace. And I said, well, I'd really rather have you tell me how much money we have left and we'll figure out how many valves we can do. And we'll so if we can do 15 valves, that's a different prioritization than if we can do 10. Mm -hmm. And so we're out, we're out kind of surveying those now and where we want to locate them. Um, let's see. Okay. The 2021 budget. So I think we we all we had a, we had that workshop meeting. And I think at the end of that workshop meeting, we all felt, I mean you all felt, and I think. Matt and I were in agreement that the, the best way to approach the 20% rate increase that we're going to need for Cooper Lake is to maybe do some gradual rate increases to get us to that 20%. And, and in fact, when you do that, the cost to the rate payer is lower than if you did one big 20% rate bump. And I think it was the mayor's suggestion, jump in here, you know, you don't want me to summarize, that we maybe consider a 5% rate increase this year, even though we only need a 2% to solution the budget. But in chatting with the mayor the other day, um, and he, we had this conversation because he didn't know if he'd be here or not, if he'd be if he handcuffed to a table someplace, but he actually made it, that with, in light of the resurgence in COVID and the economic impact that's gonna have, that maybe we consider knocking that 5% back to three. It, it, it might be um, easier for our ratepayers to swallow. So to that end, Matt, if you wanna kind of explain what you've done with the budget to see if that would be a viable option. In terms of what we saw at the last meeting, there really haven't been any changes. I put in $150,000 for Cooper Lake. Um, that would be the 3% to get us up to five. So if we cut that down to $50,000 for next year, then we have a 3% rate increase. And for this this year, for 2020, we have budgeted 150. But um, we're talking about, I think we can get 200 out of what we have in our checking account and where we are at this current stage. So that would make up for some of that loss that we think out of budget 21. Right, water sales are up this year, partly due to COVID. So um, we have more money. 
than we anticipated we'd have. So instead of we do 50, a transfer of 50 next year based on the budget, and instead of doing 150 this year, we do 200. And, you know, we will we'll see what we can squeeze out of the budget for next year. Maybe we can do more than that 100,000 with that 300, uh, that 3% rate increase. So I don't know if you guys want to discuss that. Or... So the proposal from what we had that was mailed out was just to reduce the proposed transfer in the 2020 budget from 150 down to 50. Yes. Is there any other is there discussion by anyone? That will reduce the proposed uh, increase on water rate from five down to three. Yeah, I agree that we should just do a three. Um, and just, it's probably because I missed the last the meeting that, because I was under the impression we were doing three. Because we had talked about that last year, remember? We did, we yeah. did. And then I think there was so a suggestion. Okay. okay. That, that we, we go from three to five. Um, but I think things, things are pretty, I don't want to use the pun and say they're fluid right now. Um, but, you know, a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks with COVID. And it's not, not encouraging. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at the past notes here that I just pulled up on my screen. So I'm looking and seeing. Okay, yeah, 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 I see it. Okay. So if you, yeah. let me just, you know, Matt, do you want to talk about some of this? If Matt put together some projections, do you want to look at those? Sure. That one right there? Yeah, we can. You want the other one instead? No, I mean, okay. we don't want that one. That's... All right, that's it. Okay, good. Is that something you sent out to us or is this just new? No, this is something that Matt put together. I mean, okay. the mayor and I only had this conversation about maybe moving from five to three yesterday. Okay. So Matt's good, but he couldn't get that out of the mail to everybody. That's fine. Okay. That, that's fine. Fine. Just want to make sure I'm looking through papers and see. No, 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 you need okay. to. Do you want to share that? Uh, hang on a minute. I didn't do that. I'm a little slow here on the uptake. Sorry. I have, I have uh, fatigue in terms of, um, yeah, there we go. Is you Jimmy Noble's name there? You do, yes. So we can. There we go. Does everybody see that? When they can join us, I don't know. But we don't want this picture or do we? I'm here. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi Welcome there. Aboard. Welcome aboard. I thought I saw your name there on the screen. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had a little problem with the uh, numbers getting on, but I'm on. <laughs> okay. okay. No problem. So, those who don't know, uh, right. Jim Noble is our newest uh, commissioner right. and we'd like to welcome Jim to our, our board and look forward to his participation. Thank you. I appreciate it. I can't wait. Good. <laughs> so, so here's the rule. Dennis has a little rule. The new commissioner gets to make all of the motions that cost a lot of money. Yes. Oh, is that right? That's yes. how it works. <laughs> At least that's how I was. Really quick. The little Brand ones Spear. that take a long time. Right. Brand McSpear would always point to me and say, You better make that motion. We're spending money. Yeah. <laughs> so, welcome aboard. Okay, Thank so you. Matt jumped into. All right, so yeah. this, this is kind of, I mean, some of these numbers are estimates, so we don't have, you know, that service, not all that is solid numbers, but. So that was 2020 where we had a budget for 150 for Cooper Lake at the fourth line down. And if you adjust 2021 down to 50, you can see the 3% increase in the red. And then we got the out years, the yellow would be highlighted if we did 150 in the out years as well. And you can see the rate increase for each one of those years. And you get to the green where we're thinking we might have that first bond payment hit, which is going to jump that Cooper Lake payment up to over a million dollars. And that green would be what we take out of the capital reserve that we've been putting in for those 2020 through 23 to decrease that number instead of you know jumping way up it's only at 3.9 percent in 2024. And what were the other years? I'm having trouble, trouble to talk down on by I see it too. 
this one here. Not there. It's on the that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I accounted for in the ingredients if we were doing extra 50 in 2020. It doesn't show up in that line in 2020 because it wasn't in the budget. But of the 550 coming out in 24 and 25 to decrease the impact of the rate increase is in there if we were to do an extra 50 this year. When we get out to 26 and 27, Right. Because we're on the tw in 24 and 25, we're, it has we're reducing the, the debt service by that amount, the 300 and the 200. The, you know, essentially, it would be that Cooper Lake payment, the red highlights there. We're mm -hmm. estimating what we might be at based on what we think we might have to borrow. And that would be when it jump up to $1.03 million. You would okay. use that three hundred fifty to offset some of that payment. And and the reason we have fifteen million dollar project that's probably going to be paid for over two calendar years. So you get a band for the amount you're going to spend in the first year. Plus, the, we've already got some bands for engineering out. And then eventually, when you're done with the project, it all gets rolled into a ba a big bond. That that's where the million dollar bond payment kicks in. Up until then, you're just paying on those smaller bands. So it's not it's not an easy thing to calculate. There's a couple of assumptions in here, but we think that's what it's going to be. And we think that it's, you know, a, a 3% this year, and it might be an 8% next year. Next year. But, but, you stick with the 150. Right. We can, we can, you know, obviously we have some room to play with that. And, you know, put, put that, that, Cheap platter in on Salt Hill Road and make some money. No, just kidding. So, so Judy, do you know what the rate is now on bonds and uh, how long this uh, bond would be for? 25 years or? You're talking to John Tui, 20 years for the actual bond once it goes right. out. That seems to be what he thinks we can do. I mean, this is a, the life of the project is really 50 years. But I don't think you can really realistically on the market sell 50-year bonds. Now, these numbers and these rate increases could change if we can fund, of that $15 million project, The about $7 million of it is really drinking water related. So it's the new infrastructure, the new gate, the, the well house, the new in, in infrastructure piping, as well as the Shokan connection. If we can get that funded through the DWSRF, even as a, 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 a subsidized loan, instead of being, as an example, a 3%, then we're probably paying a percent and a half. So those numbers would alter. But because we don't know that we've gotten those, that, that funding yet, you know, we're pretty certain that they'll give it to us. We're on the IEP. But until we actually get to say, hey, yeah, we're going to give this to you, and if you've noticed, there's no WIA grants being announced right now. There's no second round of funding. Um, I mean, I just got off a webinar today about that because the state's fiscal crisis mm -hmm. and COVID is really um, hampering things. So the money that they approved last year in the grants and all that, that money's going out the door and people are doing the work, but there hasn't been any announcements of, as, at least yet. And usually those announcements come out in October. Well, you know, John always gave us a, a formula kind of through the city. Whenever we bonded, it was always like 50,000 paying back on a million. So per year. So I don't know, maybe the rates have gone up or something. They were pre really low when I left I, or zero or 1% or something similar um, to that. When we had the, re when we renewed the band in March, they were extremely low. I mean, we did very well. I don't know what the number is off the top of my head, but I, I want to say it was under one, around one. Right. It, was okay. very, it was very good in March when we renewed the band. So hopefully this coming March when we renew it again, we'll get similar numbers. Right. So those, these numbers could change, but I kind of asked Matt to, to give us the worst case scenario. So that, oh, that, okay. 
so that because we don't know if we're going to get the subsidized funding. And I think I think the assumption was the rates were going to be around three. The bottom. Yeah. Uh, so it's still so yeah. 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 Three, three and a half. Right. Of that news. But um, and also taking out the right. whole fifteen million. Right. And I the mean, whole thing. I think it's even possible if you feel the bonds are going to start rising. To borrow a significant amount of money, what you think would cost the whole, you know, project, and maybe not spend it all or spend any of it until you're ready to spend it to get the lower rate. It might save money in the long run. Just saying, you know. Okay. We can look at that. Makes sense. We can look at yeah. that. Sure. All right. Have a crystal ball to kind of figure out ahead of time when when the rate's going to go up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I you done with yeah. okay. you go right. to Vegas. <laughs> we thought about that, Jim. So, Jim, this is being live streamed on Facebook. So, just so you know. All right. I want to see the headline in the Freeman. Waterboard's going to Vegas. <laughs> no, if you could determine the future, I said. <laughs> oh, yeah. What number is coming up? Yeah. So, um, I think we're good there. I mean, so, we need a motion to. Do you have a question? Are we still looking at this uh, this number here? Are you still coming up with a with a deficit? Well, in order to sort of resolve that deficit, we need a two percent increase. But the board is proposing, I think, on the table right now, a three percent rate increase and put the, the, that extra fifty thousand so as a hedge against. There will not be a deficit. Your budget. Oh no! 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 yeah, yeah. 300. Yeah. Well, actually, the 83. Yeah. 300. We'll, we'll present. And, and then right. the next motion will be to pass a rate increase of the water sales of 100 percent right. to account for the difference. Thank you. Okay. So I need, so I need a motion then to accept. You want the upper freight schedule before the last uh, step, the 100 plus step. Well, if you wanted, if you want to discuss it before the motion, one of the, one of the things that we also discussed at the workshop was that that, that a rate schedule of hundred units plus over a two year period, kind of rate, kind of eliminating that rate. So we, so instead of having such a deep uh, declining rate schedule, we kind of tightened up those top ends, and so because really we don't have very many customers that pay them anyway. We're largely a residential and small office community. We don't have any big, other than the hospitals and some of the institutions, you know, we really don't have, we're not a manufacturing community anymore. We don't have reason to have those rate increases, those rate steps like that. And so Matt looked at that, and if you want to. Well, Pass was normally two separate motions, weren't there? Right. Yes. Do you want to do them in two separate motions? We'll do two separate motions. We'll okay. accept the, All right. the budget on the first first motion, and we'll accept the second motion for okay. modifying the rate schedule. No, I think it should be reversed. Okay, so we'll talk about. I think the rate increase should go in first. I think so. Otherwise, you're, you're sitting here with a deficit budget for a small period. What doesn't make a difference to you? Mm -hmm. He's going to do the budget and rate increase. We're talking about changing the rate schedule. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh. Right. Does, it, does it matter? I mean, I think you should do that first. Okay, so you want to, so there's a proposal in order for the budget to be as somewhat balanced. Well, there's two things there's the rate increase or modified modification of the rate table. Right, and that should be probably done last. But now, but you don't need that to, to balance your budget. Do you? I mean, we're going to do it tonight, right? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just it doesn't just matter. Order. Yeah. It's just the order. I would do I would do the two rate increases, the rate addressing first, and then do your budget. That's my okay. suggestion. If it makes no difference to you, I think that's no. the way it should be. Not at all. That's why we're there. Okay, so we'll. We'll discuss the water rate increase for 2021. And the proposal in order to have a balanced budget is a 3% rate increase. Right. Yes. That's right. So I'm looking for a motion to um, increase the water rates for 2020 by 3%. 
I'll make that motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Thanks, Jim. Um, any further discussion? Am I hearing any? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, it's carried. So this second part is we're going to modify the water rate table or how do we discuss it? The rate schedule. The rate schedule. And Matthew wanted to provide the specifics of what we're actually doing here. We're eliminating. Well, currently we have the, the base rate, and then there's four steps to the 5 to 20, the 21 to 40, 41 to 100, and then everybody over 100 units. So the motion to amend the rate schedule, correct? To amend it. Over two, yes. over two years, so we're not eliminating it this year. That's not the proposal I'm making anyway. How could we, to increase that particular step in the rate schedule by 20% instead of the three, which would bring it closer to the 41 to 100 rate step. You're right. Okay, so we're increasing the 100 plus units step in the rate schedule by 20%. That's who it really is. I mean, it's more leaks. Okay, so do I have a motion then? To I'll make the motion. motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, is there any further discussion needed? So we're increasing the 100 unit step by 20%, the rate increase, water rate? Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? That's carried. Okay, and then the last item is approving the 2021 budget. As presented, the modified one is presented. As modified. As modified. A motion to accept. Make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And carried. Inform Mr. Quigley. Oh, um, he's going to. Sorry. Make it happen for once. Or happier than he was before. Okay. Okay. Thank you, folks. Um, Corey Street. Uh, and following last month's meeting, I sent a letter to the school district and I'll follow up with a phone call. Um, the next thing that has to happen, <laughs> they have to let us know who, who their council is and so we can come up with an agreement. Um, and that's, a, I think, a pretty straightforward approach. So I think we're moving along on there. To report, we're you know kind of working on the sewer lines. I don't know when they're going to finish for the season, but I imagine it will be when the weather closes in on them. See, they're over on uh, Albany Avenue side now. Yeah. So. And they're working on our water lines at the same time. Sewer. So the sewers first because it's deeper than the okay. water lines. They were going to leave the one water line capped and dead. And I said, well, you can do that, but you're going to end up with a popsicle. It's going to freeze over the winter. It's going to break, and you're going to have to replace it. So at some point, and they may have already done this, they're going to work on an evening or on a Saturday, and they're just going to get across, and they're going to tie it back into the old Yamino end, so there's circulation. So, so tying it in from, from where? From like in front of Domino's, 
and they're going to go across the intersection to tie it into the main over there in front of the church. Um, and they were just going to leave it dead ended, which creates water issues for places like Tom and Moose, mm -hmm. um, the water quality issues, but it also that, that main is going to freeze with no circulation unless we don't have anything for us. Okay, so. Um, Tech City. And we're being paid, we have nothing to, you know, we're, we wrote off, um, I'll talk to you, it's not on the agenda, but we, the tax roll, we've we right. finished that. And so I want to mention that. She said there's cops all over the place. But um, anyway, um, <laughs> no, we're gonna, um, more than that, a lot of weight. Yeah, that's what. what I mean. <laughs> Anyhow, we're we're, um, <clears throat> we're waiting for the other shoe to drop with the county and then the Tech City building, the Bank of America building, mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to deal with that at some point because once farm to table moves into the county building, my expectation is, but I haven't had a conversation with Jim about this yet, um, mm -hmm. is that they're going to stop paying um, uh, the, the, everybody the, the balance of the consumption on that side of the road. So we're, we're gonna have to make some choices and some decisions to you know, force folks to the table to discuss a longer term view. Do we even know how many are in there then? Uh, no, I don't, I have no idea. Okay, every time. <laughs> And we don't have a, debt, a time frame at all and Farm the Table is going to move to the Bank of America building? No, I don't have one. Okay. I mean, it could be a ways right. off. Uh, it could be. And I, I can very, I can reach out to Jim to find out. Jim Hyman from Farm the Table. So right. I will do that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, before they pack up on that one side and move to the other, we need to meet with whoever's left over there. To see how they're going to work. Right, 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 right. So, anyway. And there's nothing new that we know of in regards to Ginsburg and what's going on with that side. I don't know if it's in. I know nothing, and I don't, Mayor, I don't think you have any updates either. So. Okay. Um, and the last thing we knew was the county wanted to take that over for taxes too, right? But then he was going to. All right, and that's a, that's a legal issue. I don't know where that is. I mean, obviously, if you don't pay your taxes, eventually, the municipality takes your tax, your, your property. But I guess he. But the issue was that he was going to file bankruptcy, and that was going to. That only stays it. That doesn't. Right. I, I. You know. I. I don't. I don't know where that fight is. It's not something that. You know, I'm certainly familiar with, and it's not something that's really anybody. Concern. That right. shared with me. But I'm sure Jim, I can, I can ask the town of Ulster supervisor when I chat with him about the water rates. Jim obviously has to be in that loop because it's his taxes. Okay, but at this particular time, there's nothing's changed. Nope. Okay. Auctions International. That's the, uh, why don't you um, chat about that a little bit? So we have two vehicles that are sitting down on um, Will. Will we're having them at the pipe yard. And they're basically junk. The windows are out, flat tires, oh, haven't been touched. Um, so we put them up on Auction International. We got a bid of on the 1985 Ford Grumman Olsen. It's an old red truck. That's what we're calling it. Who bought it from Ulster Uniform? Was our ER man? And we got a bit of three hundred and thirty dollars for that. <laughs> and then there's a two thousand and six Ford E fifty E three fifty van with the windows all busted out. Doesn't start. We got five hundred and fifty dollars for that. So a total of eight hundred eighty dollars for things that we were prepared to change Spend money to, yeah, to, to take, change, the, change the dump truck and, and take them down to the scrapyard. Yes. Okay, so do we need to a motion to accept those two bids? Yes. Okay, okay Joanne's made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 
Those opposed? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Um, correspondence? Nothing. Nothing. And, and I mean, I don't know when you want to handle this, but I, those board policies, I love right. them. And, the tax, and I just want to brief everybody on the tax roll, and then we're good. Um, it's up to you. We can do um, whatever you want, and then we'll finish up with the superintendent's report. So. Let's, let's, let me just really quickly, the tax roll is finalized. This is every year we um, uh, put the first and second of the current year unpaid water and sewer bills and the third and fourth of the previous year goes over on the taxes. Um, we complete that process right about this time, this Tuesday before Thanksgiving every year. Um, and this is what happened. Give me a second here. Here we go. So, this is just the last five years of what we put over on the taxes. And you can see that this is just the water charges and it, the, the sewer charges are, are more because the sewer rate's high, but it, it, it's comparable. But anyway, so 2017, 2021, we put less money on the tax roll to be collected with the tax roll than we have in the last five years. Um, and our rates have gone up every year. So, and it's the same cast of characters that we see every year. There's a whole host of property owners that by their own choice, they do it deliberately. They're either landlords and they choose to pay it that way um, with their escrow and some homeowners do that. I mean, it's the same folks. Jane believes, and Jane's really been doing this for years now and she's really got her head into it. She really believes in 21, what may be less than any other year is that we the buildings in Kingston, the real estate closings are phenomenal. I mean, we probably have done 400 closings or almost 400 closings in 2020, well, 20, and we probably did half that in previous years. So property's hot. Okay. And at the closing, they you gotta pay, you gotta pay, you gotta pay up. So she really believes that this is what it is. The letter went to John Tui as we're required to do by the charter. Um, the, the actual accounts went to the county um, and they all put them over on the real property tax bills and the city clerk got a letter uh, with this number and that she'll present to the common council. So, and that's all as per the charter. So, so how much is going over? Um, this year it's the 30, almost three, 340,000 of water. So it's it's been um, been pretty good for us. Um, we no longer can collect those water bills in this office. They're no longer doing payable here. They're now payable with next year's taxes. The issue that's that arises: anybody who has a closing between now and when the tax bills are issued has to escrow that money because you can't pay it to anybody, and it. Comptroller's office can't collect it until it's actually the tax bills are issued. So there's this several week period or at Christmas where um, water bills can't be paid. They just have you have to hang on to them until they get put over on the taxes. So you actually get your tax bill. So you may hear people complain. Some people complain about that, but and so do we get a money from who? From the county or the city? Uh, the city. It's the comptroller. Um, by the charter, I believe they have to make us whole by June. For years now, especially since John tui has been there, um, they make a couple of our bond payments early in the year for us on our behalf. Um, we record it as a cash payment as if they paid us the cash and we made the bond payments. And then around July or August, John gives us the balance. So that's by mutual agreement that we do it that way. It works for his cash flow better and it works for our cash flow better. So it, it's, um, but that's the smallest number we've had in a long time. Okay. Um, in your board packet, I sent out, there's two board policies. 
One is the computer use policy. Mayor, you will notice that it is the same computer use policy that's adopted by the city and been vetted by um, your, your uh, labor councils. It's something that Kyle had asked me to do 18 months ago. And I had taken the trouble of putting our name where the city is because in order for it to be enforceable and discipline our employees here, the water board has to adopt it, but it's every place that says city of Kingston, I just put in Kingston water department. Um, it's the exact same policy. And the driver for this was with the new skating system, we are on the city server and nobody on the city can get into our skate stuff and nobody on our side can get into the city files as it should be. We had an employee who decided that they would explore. They tried to break into everybody's files. They weren't successful thanks to Kyle. But there was a couple of folders that Kyle said, shame on us, we didn't have protected and they copied them. So there is a discussion that we're gonna have with this individual. Um, Kyle has since locked everything down, but without a policy that each employee signs, there's really no way to discipline them. And so we need, you know, this is, like said, Kyle is on the money. He asked me to do this a while ago. It sort of fell through the cracks. So I'd like to, the cow might be out, but I'd like to close the door anymore anyway. So that's the first policy. And the second policy is just kind of memorializing something that we put in place a while ago and that we always pay for recertification credits for our, our operators. Everybody needs 30 hours of recertification credits every three years. We budget for it, we pay for it. And this policy just um, kind of memorializes and um, uh, structures what happens if we pay for, we, we sign you up for a class that you've asked to attend and you fail to show up and there's no undertaker or hospital involved. Um, we have people do that. And so this just says, you know, that they have to reimburse us. And they also have to show proof that they actually went. Um, and, it, and, it, and they need prior approval before signing up because there were times when we had holes in the schedule because, oh, I didn't I tell you I signed up for a class today. So um, they're the two policies I ask that the board consider. When they, get, when they take a continuing ed course, mm -hmm. and they get credits. Yeah. Do they send, submit that to the office in Israel? We have a file. And, and actually the file resides, the chief operator keeps the file. But I get a rundown every month in his report of how many credits, when their license is due, their name, where they are due, and where them. they are. And, and believe me, we do send out little reminders to say, hey, your license is due next year and you need 20 more credits and you know, no, no, no license, no job. And we're only gonna budget for 10 credits a year. So figure out how you're gonna get the rest. We have had that conversation, but no, he does give me this list every month. Okay, so we need a motion to, to, to do two separate motions. Okay, motion to approve the, um, Technology, service, and equipment use policy. Make a motion. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's carried. Um, and then the second motion I'm looking for is the employee training policy or recertification. Make I'll okay, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, superintendent's report down to that, correct? And, and I want to beat you to the punch. On page two, there's a typo. We have 814 days of water remaining in Cooper Lake, not 1,800 days. <laughs> Bill, I, I, that's not, Bill just pointed that out. Oh, I have a circuit. I have a circuit. I was on that. So, so what's it actually? 814, and one shouldn't be there. That's right. So, yeah. No, yeah. 
Still three inches below. Huh? Well, we're, we're, we're down, at, we're up to, from 6'4", we're up to 6'1", or 6'2". We've had a lot of rain in, you know, the, in November so far. And, okay. But the leaves are, fortunately, the leaves are down. But there was a point where we were sending people up four or five times a day on overtime and on the weekend just, just, to, clear. just to rake leaves off the intake. Um, this last storm we had the other night that was pretty violent. Um, and that water must have been coming down that creek pretty quickly because all the rocks and the water must have been up on the banks and all the leaves. I mean, that intake was plugged tight and it took them about four hours to dig it out. They did a great job. And now I looked this morning, we had about 15 million gallons going there at that point when I looked at it today. So we should start at least to recover something based on this rain. And it's a big watershed, it's 10 square miles, so we're, it's gonna drain for a while. And you got your uh, thermometer for your water temperature in place? Yeah, we did, we did. Mm -hmm. Temperature pro? Yes, and, and, and that really impacts your pHs. I mean, that's what that, yes, you do. Hey, you know. hey could I ask a dumb question? Sure. It's not dumb questions. Go ahead, Jim. What what happened? What's the difference between production and consumption? The difference. What what is that? Production is what comes out of the treatment plant. That, that what comes out of our bidding water reservoir and goes into the system. And the consumption is what we get off of our meters. And there's a huge delta. So we've either got some mismatched registers or, and some you know, out of calibration meters that we have to look at, or we've got some leaks. Um, we, we did do a study. Um, we know that our domestic meters, the small five eighths inch meters, which are about of the 8,000 meters we have, there are about 6,800 of, of them are the smaller meters that we have. We know they're 80, 89, 87% accurate. I mean, they're pretty accurate. Um, and so it might be through some of our bigger meters, it might be our master meter that we need to have calibrated, um, but, but we, we're drilling down on that number. What's the use of fire hydrants and non-meter use? Okay. There is, there, there's some, you know, the city uses fire, you know, the fire on Wall Street. I don't, I don't know what they put on that. And what we can look at in a couple of days, I can see the number kind of, you can, it kind of jumps out at you. But I mean, that's kind of stuff, obviously we, we don't mean. So now what now Judy, what about production? Is that as much as you want to make or use or send through the treatment or just it's ha it's, based, it's it's a gravity system, Jim. It's based on demand. So you know, you can watch, and I know you, I don't expect anybody to do this, but if you look at it on on the throughout a day, you know, at eleven o'clock in the morning, our flow into the city on demand is probably five million gallons. And at one o'clock in the morning, it's probably a million and a half gallons. So it fluctuates around the day, over the day, but we're averaging about 3.8, 4 million gallons a day. That's what, that's what has to flow into the city to keep the water coming out of the taps. So you could treat more and send more or Oh, we can, we, we, can we, have, we have a treatment plant that's 8 million gallons and we have, you know, we renovated all the filters. We actually could do 8 MGD out of that plant. Um, we have a safe yield on our reservoir system that's 6 million gallons, and we have transmission mains that could do about 10 million gallons. So yes, we could, you know, we, we have the capacity. Um, we, and one of the things with this bidding water project is it's cleared up a couple of hydraulic restrictions that we had. And we've still got one more that we're working on, but, but you know, it's, we really cleaned up a lot of old, the system is again, you know, just because you, you you take something out, you put something in in 1927, and the 1930, you know, you don't need it anymore. But you leave it in the ground, and in 2020, you stand there and you go, "What the heck was that for?" Why? So we've just cleaned up a lot of that um, uh, down at Bidding Water, uh, in particular. So um, we have a good million gallons ex excess of water that we could that we can produce and sell easily. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Well, we'll have to talk about that. Okay. You obviously have an idea. <laughs> so, good. Any other questions, Jim? 
No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. So motion to accept the report. As so well. Motion to accept the report. Is that a second? I'll second it. Okay. Those in favor? All right. Opposed? Carry. Anything for executive session? I do not have anything. Okay. But at some point, I, I probably will, and I'll need to figure out how we can do this. <laughs> Okay. Um, I guess a motion to adjourn then, right? Unless there's anything else. Motion to adjourn? Someone? Okay. Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, folks. Thank you, everybody. Welcome aboard, Jen. Yes. Bye. Hey, Jen. Bye. I just want to hey, say thank you. Uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and thank you for everything and all your hard work and stay safe in the coming, you know, thank weeks. You. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye. Okay. Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Thanksgiving. Right. Thanksgiving's right. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.